Hi ladies and gentlemen, my name is Troy Allen Gallant. Welcome to Trigger Time TV presented by Crossbreed Holsters. guys we're back out to Pascagoula Mississippi with Kerry Davis of Dark Angel Medical. Kerry's going to talk about field expedient medical equipment. Hey folks this is Kerry Davis of Dark Angel Medical. We're back here on the range today and we're going to talk about something a lot of people don't even think about. What if I don't have a medical kit with me? What can I use? What can I use out of my environment? How can I exploit my environment to mimic the actions of what I need in my med kit? Now not all of us are always going to have a Dark Angel medical kit with us even though we should. And so it's important for us to realize and think about what we can use in our environment that can mimic the actions of something that is, uh, that's going to replicate uh, what's in our medical kit from commercial uh, components. Now one of the things we can look at is tourniquets. Now I've got a tourniquet here. This is a combat application tourniquet. Now this is a great tourniquet to have. If, whether you have this or a soft T-wide or a RATS or, or, uh, or uh, any other tourniquet out there that you utilize, as long as you're good with it, that's great. But what if you don't have this with you? What if something prevented you from having a tourniquet with you? What could you use in the, in the, uh, from your environment? Look at what happened in Boston. Whenever the bombing occurred in Boston, over 50 people's lives were saved with improvised tourniquets alone. And that's not as great as this, but guess what? It did what it was supposed to do, and that's keeping blood inside the body. Now what I can use in its place is a carabiner, something as simple as a carabiner, and a rifle sling. Now with an improvised tourniquet, we need to make sure that the tourniquet is at least one inch wide. Why is that? Well, because if it's at least one inch wide, we don't have to worry about garroting the tissue or creating a ligature on the tissue and actually cutting and damaging that tissue. If it's an inch wide or if it's even wider than that, that's even better. The wider it is, the better it is because what that's going to do is going to going to create more surface area compression. The more surface area that's compressed, the less compressive force you actually have to use to shut down those arteries and shut that blood flow off to that limb. So the wider it is, the better it is. Now, something else we need to think about. What if I need a pressure bandage? Well, we may not always have a nice thick Israeli dressing hanging around that we can utilize. Well, what can we use outside of our environment? Well, you got this pressure bar here that exerts 30 to 50 pounds per square inch over the injury. What can I use in my environment that I may not that I may have available. Well, we may have something like an ACE dressing available. If you had something like an ACE style wrap, some sort of elastic bandage, how about a tube sock? How about a sweatshirt sleeve? Anything like that that's going to create some pressure around the wound. Now, we need something to dress that wound. This is just the bandage. This goes on the outside. The dressing actually goes on the inside. If you had something like a roll of gauze, well, a roll of gauze is great, but not almost always carrying a roll of gauze with us. How about a shop towel? If you have a dish towel, shop towel, anything like that, any kind of absorbent material is what we're looking for. You can place that over the wound. That's going to be your band, that's going to be your dressing. Now what if I wanted to put some pressure on there? I can actually add something as small as a bottle cap to go on top of that and wrap it around with that, that compressive dressing and that's going to add in, or that compressive bandage, and that's going to add in the pressure that I need to help stop that bleeding. Now with a compressive dressing like this, it's important to realize we're not trying to turn into a tourniquet. Just check for circulation, motor function, sensation after you put it on. How about a chest dressing? Well, if somebody's got a penetrating thoracic trauma, they may need some sort of occlusive dressing like this halo seal. If they don't have the halo seals available or if you don't have any other kind of chest seal available, use something that's non-porous. What's non-porous in my environment that I can use? Plastic bags and good old-fashioned duct tape. Any of this stuff works very well. Again, it doesn't have to be fancy, it just has to work. Something else we could use? How about a chewing tobacco bag? That's non-porous. As long as we have these edges covered, and leave a little area for a vent there, you're gonna be good to go in keeping that thoracic cavity covered up with, a, with an occlusive. Now, if somebody has a penetrating eye injury, something else we can even use is something like a crushed up water bottle. That can cover the eye, and we can duct tape that in place. You can even use something like a dip can to cover the eye and, and, and tape it in place. And now, if it's something that's gonna be protruding out of the eye, you could even use something like the top of a spray can lid to get that thing out of there, to keep that thing from getting, uh, 
from getting damaged, remember to cover the other eye up as well because your eyes move in unison. If you're looking for splinting material, you need a SAM splint, something like this, go with a stick, rolled up newspaper, rolled up cardboard, anything to immobilize the joint above and below. It's not about having a nice fancy med kit, it's knowing how to use the tools in that med kit. Knowledge is power, knowledge is key. If you have any questions about our classes or our kits, contact us at info at darkangelmedical.com and most of all, stay safe. Trigger Time TV is brought to you by Crossbreed Holsters, Osprey Armaments, Troy Industries, Troy Defense, BCM, Bravo Company USA, Caltech, Nemo Arms, Tactical Walls, Dark Angel, Mission First Tactical, EOTech, Mayflower Research and Consulting, Streamlight, Wiley X, and Freedom Munitions.